In this video, we're going to demonstrate how to create a new view container. So view containers are those containers that the Lightshow screen uh, are situated in, and we commonly refer to those as being the Chrome around the screen. So let's take a look at what a view container looks like. Uh, what I've done is I've copied over the default screen container, which is part of the provider project. And if we open that up, the first thing that you'll see is that it's, uh, look, it has some invalid markup because the converters are actually defined inside the um, provider project. And of course, just simply copying this over doesn't give you the converters. So um, first thing we need to do is resolve the converters uh, so that we have um, uh, this particular error going away. And since we know that the converters are actually um, uh, derived from the provider assembly itself, what we can do is simply um, delete this line here and replace it with a equally efficient line like so. There we go. And now you can start to see that the XAML is starting to spring to life uh, as it's finding the converters. And you can see here that in this particular uh, view container, we have a validation summary control uh, the, from the SD SDK uh, Silverlight library. Um, I think we're still down to one particular control. That's correct. Um, so we want to uh, resolve this uh, observable um, region manager object. And this particular, um, uh, d the definition for this, this uh, uh, item is actually uh, located inside the core assembly. So all you need to do is uh, change the common definition so that it uh, refers to there. And uh, I'm sure once we compile that, that'll be fine. Let's double check. That looks like it's right. And, uh, well, let's just give it a quick compile and see if that does fix the problem. Sometimes uh, in uh, Silverlight, um, even though the, the issue has been resolved, it still shows up as, uh, as an issue. But uh, I'm pretty confident. There we go. There, it's gone now. Okay, let's take a look at this particular view container. So, what a view container is, is the c it's, it's a container that um, you have the flexibility of designing and changing uh, the look and feel of. And if you look at this particular view container, you can see that um, it's really just a grid with one, two, three, four rows. Uh, a very important thing to note is that the row where you're putting your screen container, uh, where your actual light switch screen is going to be injected, um, which in this case happens to be row 012, uh, make sure that you don't set the height. Um, just leave it as this. Um, if you set the height, then you'll lose your scroll scrolling capabilities on your light switch screen. Um, so if we look down here, uh, and the very first thing that we see in uh, row 0 is a, um, a stack panel. And this stack panel consists of a... Um, uh, background uh, with a gradient uh, look to it and uh, you can see the gradient up here. So why don't we um, make that change. Uh, let's just do something quite radical here. Let's change this to, uh, uh, let's see, a red, red background. Okay, so uh, you can see the change that's happening up above. And let's change this to be a little purple. All right, so now you can start to see that uh, we're losing our, we're replacing our reds, sorry, our blues with some uh, more of a red look. All right, so as you can imagine, you you have the ability to lay uh, out any um, type of layout you, you really want um, within a view container. You'll notice here that in this view container, we also have a stack panel that's uh, uh, where we're um, applying these region tags. So these are those named regions if you've watched the introductory video. Uh, so um, when you're building view containers, if all you have to do is copy these named regions and uh, place them in your view container, and you will end up with these, um, these little squares. These are targets. These are known as targets within uh, LightSwitch. So we'll make a non-functional um, region just to demonstrate um, that you can put as many regions as you want. So we'll just add a, another region in here. And uh, this one, we'll just call this one, let's call this one uh, any region. 
All right, and just make sure that if you've got any named uh, values on your properties that you do change those so that it is unique. That's a constraint within Silverlight. All right, so now we have uh, three regions inside this overall stock panel. Uh, below that we have the title area and you can see here what we're doing is we have some visibility binding uh, going on. So we're, this is in fact we're um, being tied back to the Docshell screen container view model. So for each view that gets created uh, within a view container, um, an underlying uh, doc shell screen container view model is created. And what we're doing here is we're just binding to the view title visibility. So um, uh, if the title is uh, set to be false within your model, um, then this particular stack panel will be invisible. And below that, you can see that we also have some binding going on to uh, change the foreground color. Um, so you can see here we have a binding again to that background uh, back backing view model for the uh, screen container and so it's saying if has changes um, what we want to do is use this uh, uh, boolean to title converter um, which if you look at your view container sorry your provider project you'll get a sense as to what that does but essentially it's just changing a color um, uh, uh, between uh, one color and the next depending on um, if there is changes or not so it's tied to this property. So if false, it's one color. If it's true, it's another color. Very simple. You can set your font size. Uh, here's the actual binding to the view title itself and uh, some other properties around that. So that is set on a grid row one of your grid. And then the content area. This is where um, always name your content area as content area and always make it a grid. And place it wherever you want within your um, overall layout, but those are the only constraints that you have. Make sure that it is named um, as such, content area, and that it is uh, in a grid control. Um, and so the final one here that we see is this uh, validation summary. Um, you can see that it's uh, specified to uh, be situated in grid row three. Um, and, you know, we can change whatever kind of border and so forth. Again, the the idea is that you can build your own um, uh, containers, view containers. So let's call this one um, a, uh, well, first of all, let's go down to the code level here. So we'll go to the code. So since we made a copy of the view container, you can see that its uh, provider is, uh, uh, the namespace is probably not the namespace we want. So let's change that to light switch uh, application since we're inside the actual light switch application itself, uh, just so you can get a sense. So we have these folder structures inside the client of your light switch application, and this is where it is. So now that we have that, um, let's you know change this to be a uh, demo of a custom view container. And that's good enough. And let's just change this to uh, we'll put a p change the name to be demo view container. And you can see that um, it uh, it uh, Im it's implementing the uh, iDoc shell uh, view container interface, and this is the um, this is the interface that that the modeling tool looks for. So it looks for a collection. It looks for all uh, items that um, have this interface associated to them, and that allows it to group uh, things uh, accordingly. All right, and uh, the other thing we want to do is we want to change the name. You can make it the same name as this. You don't have to. Um, it's just that it does have to be unique uh, as far as names are concerned. So we can call this uh, whatever you would like to call it. We'll call it Demo X, and then we'll just change that to be the same. So that's your constructor, and that's all you have to do um, on your um, code side. And so now, since we change this to Demo X, and we change the namespace to light switch uh, application, we also need to go into our designer and make that slight adjustment as well. So we want to change this to say light switch application and demo container and get rid of the rest of this. That's it. We are done. So now if we hit save, now 
just simply saving this won't show it won't show up in the won't show up as an option that we can pick within our um, a light switch screen. So in fact, what we have to do is uh, we have to do a quick compile. And you can see here that I was uh, successful in the compile. And now if I was to um, go to my model, uh, it still won't show up. So if I go here, um, let's say uh, this particular, uh, oh, let's put it on the, this is that, uh, if you watch the earlier video on uh, creating a single view layout or a modal window, um, this particular uh, screen was set up. We left it as non-modal. We'll put it back to modal. Uh, but the view container in this one is just the default view container. If I go here right now, I will not see that um, uh, uh, view container. And the reason is, is that you have one more step you have to do. You have to refresh the view, the actual model within the, the tool itself. So once you've refreshed that, you should be able to go in and we should now see our demo view container. And if you look here, you can see that the message, the metadata that you've added to your view container is showing up here. And again, it's showing up it's because it's an iDoc shell view container. And that's it. Let's run and see what we get. Okay. And so as you recall, it was the add customer. Ah, so there's our pretty in pink. Uh, there's our customized view container. Um, it's showing as having changes. We actually don't have a title binding here. That's why there's no title showing. Um, and uh, you're off to the races. So you could add buttons and all sorts of things to close this window or cancel it or so on and so forth. Um, there is actually, I don't believe there is any um, validation uh, on this particular screen. So what we'll do is uh, we'll simply close this down. And we happen to know that the customer list detail screen um, uh, actually does. And you notice here that, that there's that uh, uh, custom region, which we do nothing with, called any region now showing up and surfacing on uh, this particular view container. So you could use that to sync uh, UI fragments uh, um, like we've done up here or um, anything else like a menu, maybe a, a drop down menu or something like that outside of your actions and your, uh, your standard um, uh, data command uh, that you have with LightSwitch. So what we're going to do is uh, we, we're going to change this default view container uh, and to also to be demo. As soon as I do that, you can see that uh, we're now seeing the, the same thing. Let's hit run and see what that looks like. Okay, and uh, we hit the customer button. And now you can see that it, it now has adopted that view container um, that we just built. And if you um, do something like this, simply move off the field, you can see the validation summary is kicking into gear. And if you click on the validation summary, it actually takes you to the particular control that's uh, in error. So if you have multiple um, errors, uh, the view summary control is a really nice way of, of doing that. And the really cool thing about uh, the view summary control is that, um, is uh, or doc shell in general, I guess, is that we can, um, let's make this uh, screen here, um, instead of it being a, a window uh, screen, um, what we'll do is, we will uh, link this particular screen. So by simply expanding this here, like that. <coughs> and so right now it is actually a window layout uh, screen or window layout view. So I'm going to delete that and I'm going to borrow this guy for a sec uh, since it's the same control. And what I'll do is I'll just link this uh, back to here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to instead link for demonstration purposes, the customer list detail screen. And now we hit run. And so basically what I've done is I've just uh, made this uh, create, nest, create new customer back to being a uh, dockable window and instead changed my customer list detail screen instead of being a dockable window, it's now a tool window, which happens to be set as a modal window, which is using our new uh, custom view container. And the reason I wanted to show you this is that uh, just to show you how uh, flexible it is from a validation perspective. Okay, great. So let's open up the customer screen. And you can see now that the customer screen is opening up as a modal view. And all we did was we just changed the underlying layout control, the type of layout control. So um, you can see it's a rather large one. So we'll just uh, minimize that. And um, we're good to go. We, we have scrolling because we actually built our view container properly where we actually built the uh, unit itself. And now if we take a look here, you can see that as I move off of that field, automatically the validation kicks into gear. And again, um, you can see the, uh, the uh, 
wonderful um, uh, SDK validation summary control kicking into gear. Uh, simply binding to the back end of the view containers view model, uh, which the screen is actually sharing. So there you go. Uh, thank you very much. I hope you've uh, enjoyed our little demonstration today. Um, and uh <coughs> um, I just noticed one other thing there. I, I clicked the this orders toggle here, which as you recall, I don't know if you can see it. Um, it's actually toggling the uh, the orders tab. In fact, what we'll do just real quick is I'll uh, discard that change, and what we'll do is we'll make it uh, be uh, non-modal, uh, so that that's a more obvious kind of uh, an effect, and then we'll call it a demo. So we'll just change this to be non-modal. Run it again and see what we get. We toggle that view. Okay, as you see, it's uh, opening up. And the uh, purpose of this demonstration was to show you what happens when we hit the toggle button. So you can see here that the toggle uh, command is working just like it would if I was to be. Uh, let's see, where other options do I have? Actually, the only option I have is, is here uh, at this point. Um, but uh, you can see the flexibility of the commands within uh, uh, within DocShell, and uh, um, this this um, ability to kind of surface these commands that was demonstrated inside a uh, uh, the introductory video for for DocShell. Um, so if you're uh, interested in seeing how all of that works, feel free to uh, uh, watch that video, um, which is at uh, www.softlanding.canada.com. Thanks again, and hope you enjoyed this uh, short video uh, on a building a custom view container. Cheers.